this is where we left off last time. Okay, so let's get with it. Let's, to summarize here then, what I introduced to you for the first time, um, some of you have been working with this for a decade, but many of you are not too much. So this is called a function M file. You must know the function M file. You must be good with it. It's, it's one of the main construct in good computer programming. You know? It's the function M file that allows you to break a difficult problem into logical sub pieces. It allows good design. It allows good computer programming. All companies that do major stuff break their overall big complicated design into sub pieces. I'm working on the fuselage, you know, function fuselage, function hinge on the door, you know, whatever. You know, like have you and if you ever did you ever talk to the have you ever had a chance to talk to the guy who who had designed the space shuttle? You know, well, the guy who I mean, look what a stupid statement. The guy who invented how many, how many people do you think were involved with designing the space shuttle? So, I mean, God knows. Obviously, they broke down into teams where they worked on various aspects of the space shuttle to hopefully put them together. And that's the idea of a, uh, of a function. You can, you can make little small tasks, and then you can call upon them to make the bigger thing. And when you call on MATLAB's functions, like the sine of X and all the common ones, those are just fun. Those are function M files. They're sitting behind the scenes. You didn't write them, but the fact is MATLAB recognized them. You say sine of X, it does it. So um, right now, and for instance, over here, I can do H of minus one. Okay, it's not in the right thing there. Programming, hmm. oh, I Oh, okay. You gotta call it that name. So, so this is the name. Let's look here. I called it step one. You look in my directory over here, see the current folder, my step one. It's of time t. And let me remind you, the step function is, um, I'm sharing the screen. Where do I get to uh, that little whiteboard thing? Can I draw something here? Oh, God. You know, whatever. Please look at this. Does everybody know what the step function is? Not quite. Mm. How the hell do I draw? It seems um, to just be checking if a number is positive. Well, it's uh, one of the best places is, and, and God knows what you're looking at now, but um, uh, uh, documents. Can you see all my documents now? Yes, we can see your file directory. Oh, no. No. Oh, YouTube. You don't want to see what's in YouTube. I've seen things. Look at Buddy Holly. There you go. Look at the Beatles. Mm -hmm. By the way, this, this is February 3rd. Buddy Holly died. 62 years ago today. It's amazing. And he's still beloved across the world. Um, okay. I shouldn't look at all this, I guess. Uh, not that there's anything bad here. It's just, uh, uh, let me get the step function to R. This thing. Okay. Chapter four on calculus um, is the first place I, you know, don't jump ahead, but and you can find the step function. In section 4.5 in the textbook, page, mm, this is you know, the 15th page in the chapter, this is a sequence of numbers. We'll go to section 4.5, and there is the step function. And they say a picture, I, I'm sorry to, take, to waste your time on that, but you know, I said a picture is worth a 10,000 words, so I could talk and talk and talk and talk, but I wanted to show you the picture of the step function. So the step function is a function where you evaluate its argument. And if its argument is negative, it, it evaluates as a zero. If its argument is positive, that or positive or greater than zero, it, it is a one. And 
the step function is it's the, it's the granddaddy. It's, it is the patriarch of the forcing function. This is the way I describe it. Um, when we get to physics, right now we're, we're studying like the logistics of MATLAB. And if you say, well, where are we going to apply this? I think that's probably a pretty good question. Don't worry. We've actually put in an extra week of MATLAB programming before we got to the applications from last time. Um, but where do we get? So when you get to a physical problem, you need to have a forcing function. You need to do something to a system. You want to push on it. And sometimes we're not pushing for a while. And then when the clock strikes zero, we start to push. So it's an excellent on off. It's an excellent like light switch function. Where do you use that? Everywhere. Where don't you use it? I mean, you do it all the time. You walk into a class, thermo, a heat fair, whatever it is. And the professor says, you know, Here's, here's a problem and you do this to it. Well, what he means is, you know, when the problem starts, you start pushing with a, with a value like this. And that's a zero there. Now, please tune your mind into the step function, please. Um, you know, and some students like, everybody's different, okay. Everybody has their little hangups. I have a severe hangup. It starts with Z. But anyway, um, I'm to the point like, a dishonest God truth. Like, let's say there's a word, somebody says a word, and then you get poked in the eye with an ice pick. And every time you hear that word, you get poked in the eye with an ice pick. That word to me is Zoom. Ooh, I don't even want to say it again. Anyway, you are looking at the step function now, right? Yes. I have to stop and make sure. I just, oh, for God's sake. Anyway, um, but you need to understand the step function. I'm going to use it all the time. You're going to use it all the time in your, in your academic career. And, you know, sometimes if things are fairly complicated or have some complication, the student will ask, well, can you explain it like differently? And yeah, I can. And the step function, I like, there's nothing else to explain. I like, are you tricking us? This is the most important function. You know, I don't know how else to say it. And some students go, God, you told us 10 times what it is. But I remember this I know, a semester or two ago, some kid came to my office and, you know, he'd done terrible on, terrible on test one and some of the things. And he said, God, oh, this is, I think that was in uh, system dynamics or vibrations I was teaching, but I use it all the time. But he says, God, you know, I, I look back on my old test, and you know what I didn't understand was the step function. I finally dawned on me, and I look back at like test one that I did terrible. And my God, it was mainly because of the step function. This was week twelve, by the way, after twelve weeks of the step function. So I don't know. I'm not going to criticize him for being a bad person. I mean, he just didn't catch on early, just like me. I don't catch on early. I mean, it's cool. We're all doing, we all look different. We all learn at different rates and you know you're not a bad person but please try to understand the step function before week 12 like try to understand it like now if you can and if not i will continue to i'll continue to you know show it whatever all right there it is okay back to matlab and god i hate to be like an idiot here but are you all looking at matlab yes I don't know what, I'm partially, I don't know what the hell happened to me last class. I was doing the same thing. I thought I was, you know, it might be that you set MATLAB to not share your, your, what you're seeing it. You might've set it to view a specific, um, a specific tab. Yeah. Anyway, so here we go. Now this is exactly where we left off. We're, to, we're trying to do the step function. Now let's, let's, you know, we could test it down here. I, I lost my train of thought here. Um, I called on it now. I called on an H of minus two. Now that's what I called it here. Its name, as you can see up here in the thing, its name is my step. That's the way you have to call it. And actually a good way to call it, to make sure you get it right and spell it right and get all the variables right is to actually copy the name right there and to paste and then try it. Now I'm gonna try, this is gonna be error. What was the error here? You do not have a defined variable T. Mm -hmm. So, you know, now, now, of course, I'm going to make a lot of comments that have to do with, you know, why you might come up with an error, the errors and you come up with. 
Now, if you're really great with MATLAB and don't make any errors, just don't pay attention to this, this next thing. But if, if any of you happen to get these red messages, anybody out there with red messages? No? Okay, well, I'm talking to myself then, I guess. Um, sometimes the red message, it's a little hard to understand what you did wrong, but this says unrecognized function or variable T. So what I did wrong was, there's a, a T has to be a number because it's just a number needs to go in there, like, you know, 44. Now it'll do it, so the answer is one. Okay. Now, in the testing procedure, since there's a lot of stuff that I wanna test, um, the command window is okay. I mean, you can test stuff in the command window, but if you have a lot of testing and things you wanna do and you wanna save your work, it's probably best up to say, to open a little script file where you're, you're testing things. And so let's open a script file, another script file where we do our testing and we run it, okay? Open, there you go, open over here. Uh, no, new, a new. And notice you got the script, the live script, we've got different things, system object, don't worry about what those are right now. And, uh, you know, I doubt if we'll get into, you know, you know, you know, these object things and the you know, structure arrays and stuff like that. Script, so new script. It's gonna be a set of commands. And I'm gonna give this thing a name. Well, this is gonna be testing my step function. Let me say that the purpose of today's lecture is first, you know, first of all, the step function, which is, like I said, the granddaddy of the forcing functions. It's the single most important of the step of other forcing functions. From it, you can form pulses, you can form delta functions, you can form effectively anything from it. So the step in of itself is really important. But what I'm gonna show you also is programming paradigm, some programming stuff that I need to show you anyway, and I'll do it in the context of the step function. So the programming is almost more important than the step function itself. And we have to test, okay. Um, but we need a name for this before we can run it. Like if we try to run this, you know, let's test, let's test my step one. And uh, it's spelled wrong, there we go. My step one, let's look at my step. Well, first of all, you have to set something like for a T, for T equal to minus four, and let's run it. Now you're probably gonna need, it's probably not wrong, it's gonna come up wrong. So it's going to want a name first. It by default put me in the same directory, which is where I want to be, because that's where I'm putting my intro to MATLAB. And when I get to a, a new topic like, you know, calculus, numerical integration, I'm going to start, I'm open a new folder for that. So I, in my case, I have so many files. I have to have uh, folders and subfolders or I drive myself nuts. Plus I'm neurotically organized. Some students are pretty good with that and others are not. As a personal advice, I would advise you not only to have a subfolder called ME2004, but subfolders under that with the various activities in ME2004. I, I say it's analogous to clothes. You know, you got this big pile of clothes, right? And a shirt and a sock and whatever. You know. I think it's much better to have like a drawer dedicated to socks and one to underwear and one thing hanging up your shirts and stuff so you can find them. And, you know, we don't go to your apartment, look at your closet, see if you've done that. But I really advise you to do that. Okay. And when it comes to programming, it's, I don't know how you do it. You know, some people have, like, I see there's, what do you call the front page thing, the thing. There's a thousand maps open. I, mean, I drive myself nuts. Anyway, let's come up with a name. This has something to somebody, obviously, with the step function. What is the purpose? This, this file is to test the step function. So I want step function to be first. So it's like step, step function tests. So if I read it later, I'm so familiar with step function. I said step function underscore tests. This will probably, I have lots and lots of files. If I look, open that sometime in the future, two years from now, student or what was that? Uh, step function tests, I'll probably have a good idea what the purpose of that file is, okay? All right, so, and usually I like to get going with the, um, 
we call it house cleaning scene, CLC, and, you know, close, clear, stuff like that, clear all. What I need to do a little file to just put those in, type in every time. Okay, so let's run this one. There we go. Time equals minus four, and it did the correct thing. Now, my little step function seems to be working, but this is not a very good version of the step function. Um, and let me show you why. We're going to build up step function one, two, three. Let's say t, a t vector is equal to, you know, zero through four. That's going to be zero, one, two, three, four. And now I want to evaluate my step. And I talked about vectorization last time. I mean, like if you ask for the sign of the t vector, let's run that. And no problem, the, the times were that, and, the, and the, the sine function is beautifully vectorized. This is what this means, vectorized. That means if you put in a vector of numbers, it knows to do the first one and the second one and the third one. So it's certainly reasonable to think that we will probably use the step function in that way too. We'll have a bunch of times. So we would like our step function to work that way. Let's see what it does. My step. I don't, I'm not sure that it'll work at all, but we'll try it. T vector. Okay, run. Oh, well, first of all, I spelled it wrong. Let's, let's look at the, let's, let's look carefully at the, things. it wasn't there, I want it. Cannot find an exact match for my step. So, you know, we get all sorts of questions from the students. I can't figure out what I did wrong and my step doesn't work. I think the error is pretty obvious. My name is my step one. And you say, well, it looks the same. Is this a computer program, man? It's just a bunch of yeses or noes. You've got to put it in. So that was my problem there. Um, so let's get to another problem, Paul. Oh, it worked. No, but it didn't work the way I wanted it to. You see, it didn't vectorize. See the sign vectorized and my step did not. As a matter of fact, I think what it probably did was you put in the vector zero. zero. So for the T, it went through them all and just found the last one. But we don't want it to, we don't want that. We want a better version of the step function that when we put in a vector of T's, and typically we're going to put in more than five values. We'll put in, you know, hundreds of values to make a nice plot, or we'll put in thousands of values. And we just want it to do it, just like the sign and all of MATLAB's functions do this. They naturally vectorize. We want, we want that. Okay. So with that in mind, let's we'll and we'll keep this one. This one. Let's comment this one. Does not no, let's put it away. This works for a scalar or single T. Does not vectorize. I spell this in. Uh, and I want to take the time to type this in because when you look at this later, when I'm not here, I want you all to remember some of the comments I made about it. Yes, it's the unit step by, and it does work for a scalar, spelt wrong, but whatever, scalar t, but does not work, does not vectorize for vector t. So it's not good enough if all we wanted was a single one. Okay, so let's open up a new one. Open. Nope, really the same. Open up. Now I want another, I want to make another function. I'm gonna call it probably my step two, I guess. I want another function, not a script. You could open up a script and make it into a function, but when you open up a function, this template, I guess you'd call this a template comes up. You know, you're gonna overwrite that with your name and you're gonna overwrite that with your particular input arguments and stuff like that. 
they put this here to encourage you to document your code and stuff like that. So it's nice that this little thing comes up. They put the end in for you and all that stuff. So we're going to call this one my step two. Its arguments is going our, our arguments are going to be a time as before, and out comes h. And you get all sorts of questions. Well, you can only put two. I thought you had to have two arguments. No. This is just sort of representative of the fact that you can have any number of output arguments, including zero. You could have one, like our case, you can have two, you can have hundreds. It's application sensitive. Do, do we need to leave the, um, the brackets for our output arguments? Um, when it's a single one, when, it, when it's just one thing, you don't. But if you wanted a couple things, you couldn't put like, I want H and I want S, you know, you couldn't do that. It's not going to, but you, if you say I want as output, I want H and some say there's something else called S, and you could do that. You know? Thank you. Yeah. So therefore, it's probably good practice to just go ahead and put the um, parentheses around even the single one, although you don't need it. Um, so let's see what we said here. This is the unit step function. Let's just copy that one. There is this detail explanation there. We're going to make some comments here. And what I want to do here, the logic, let me let me take you through the logic. See, when, and I need to draw a little flow chart, I don't know what to draw here, but uh, the problem is when we put in a vector, we want it to do the first one, then do, this thing works fine for one thing. So my logic here is I put, I'm going to put a vector T in, and I'll do it for the first one and record the result, do it for the second one and record the result, do it for the third one, etc. dot to dot to dot. But for any, any one value, this seems to work beautifully. Okay. All right. So that's kind of, so what we want to do is kind of wrap a loop around this. You know, we want to wrap a for loop. Now this time, I talked about the for and the while. We want to basically wrap either a for or a while loop around this structure, to so, so we do it each time. And in this particular case, since we're going to put in a, t, a known t, the for is the preferred mechanism. The while can be used also, but that's what I was saying about the for. If I know I want to do something five times, I'll do four, one to five, and, Go to town. So, so we can go ahead and copy and paste this because this part works. Copy and paste this part. Let's don't get rid of our end statement. Well, that's another end there. That's that end. That end is for the if statement. That's absolutely critical. This end is for the function. So we'll separate them there. Okay. And we better save this thing. Save. Save as. And it's opened up my same little directory. And let's call it my step two. My step two. It, it you know, knows how to save. So now save. All right. So like I say, uh, this thing. Four. I, I want to take the first element. For I, say a counter. I is a common used index for a counter. I or a J or a K or a one of the little, one of the little uh, lowercase letters in the middle of the alphabet are commonly used there. You don't have to. People say we have to use I. No, we could use you know my friend Bubba. So Bubba equals one to you know, but whatever. I'm the only human that uses Bubba as a technical variable. So. My good buddy Bubba. For I goes one, two. And we'd count the number of, like, let's say there's five elements here. We'd go one to five. But the problem with that is that now I do another case and there's a different number than five. So we want, we want MATLAB to count it for us each time. So we do, and MATLAB's command that counts how many variables is called length. So this does it from one to the length of t. And if T has five elements, that's a five. And if it has 5,000 elements, that's 5,000. So get to use the length command. It's, you know, length command is one of those really useful commands. I mean, 
probably, you know, in, in conjunction with the four and stuff, you know, we ought to make a list of, you know, the two dozen most important commands in MATLAB to us. Certainly the plot would be up in there, you know. But anyway, um, so four, and, we're, and there's going to be an end is four. Four, I, and, and the first thing we want to do is this if statement. See, the, 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 you do four I's and you do something. Let's see, for I, let's see. Now, another issue. Is these have, you know, time is not, when we're thinking about time is not just one number, but in the whole elements of numbers. So there's the first one, the second one, the third one. So we have to kind of do it like the first one, the second one, the third one. And we really need to do H that way. Okay, and there's something else to tell you about this too, but anyway. God, I'll have to explain it. So for this, we want to do this. And end. Now, I like this thing to be indented. This bothers me that it's not indented. I think if I... There, now it indented. Mm. Yeah, the indent structure didn't work right, didn't work as, as normal because I copied this from someplace else. Could you remind me why we have the um, comma after zero? Um, we probably, did I have it the other one? Or is it? It seemed to work. I, I, if you do this, well, you can string these things together. I mean, you have the comma. I'm not sure if you go to a new line when you need it, but so, some people, the way they code their stuff is this way. They string everything together like that, you know, and it drives me absolutely up the wall. I like to do one thing, comma, the next thing, the next thing. I've messed up my structure here, but um, no, it's okay. I like to do one line, one thing, one line, no matter how simple. You know, I don't like everything crammed up. So, so I guess you need that in there. I guess MATLAB requires that as a structure. Yeah. So, um, okay, I, I like my codes to look like this. So here's the four and the end of the four. Now, what you're gonna do is, is, is like, Four I equal do, you're gonna do something. Right? So you go one, you do something. Two, you do something. Three, you do something. The something is test the step function. So test whether this this T is less than zero or not. That's the thing you're doing. And then end. So we've got a lot of we've got a lot of blank. You know, actually a lot of this, um, what do you call um, uh, blank space can help. I don't need that many blank spaces in the end. And so notice if you close this up, it closes up with just another four. And if you close up the whole function like that, MATLAB has a lot of these little um, debugging like thing tools like that. So see for that. And then if you, because you, know, you might want to close that up, not look at the detail and close up some pieces. So, okay. <clears throat> Some testing here, some testing. Oh, God knows who knew that. I don't think we were there. But anyway, step function tests. Now, copy, paste. I don't know if this is the best way to do this. Step function two. Uh, since we've already tested this one, let's do the following. You can you can put, grab everything. Right click and say, comment them all. Just comment those out now that we've finished with step function one. I do want this all collected in, in, a, in a script file though, because what if we want to look at it next time? What if you, the students, want to 
you know, after this lecture, want to look at it to try to learn something and it's gone. You know, I, I want everything recorded on your computer for you to look at if you want to. Okay, so now we're testing step function two. I don't think we need to do the sign thing anymore, you know. I, yeah. And let's see if step function two, first of all, does the right thing for a single number. And let's see if it does the correct thing for multiple numbers. And just to make sure it's working right for multiple numbers, let's have some negative numbers in there, minus two to four, to make sure you're doing the negative numbers right also. Okay, you ready to cross your fingers and run this thing? Oh, yay. Oh my God, yes. Look, look, it looks a great success, very nice. We put in time as minus four, it came up with a zero. We put this whole vector of time, so notice it came up with a whole vector, a whole vector of the correct answers. Yay. Minus two, zero, minus zero, when it comes zero greater, one, 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 beautiful. still doesn't handle a matrix of numbers, but I think this will be good enough for time being. Um, you know, if the time vector, well, we can continue to explore with that, but you know, that's not nice done. What we've done here now is we have sort of vectorized, well, let's go back here. This one, what happened was we put in a whole vector of numbers and just kept, just sort of took the last one is all it did. It lost all the information, just came back with a single number, not good enough. What we've done now, and it's more complicated, is when a whole vector of numbers came in here, we took each one, we took the first one, the second one, the 10,000th one, and in each one, we tested and recorded the result. See, that's kind of like recorded the result. Sometimes I use that term, I've, I've said, like when you, going in some, depends on problem, you know, all sorts of problems, but students need to calculate something and then you record the result. And students will ask me, well, how do you record the result? Well, in MATLAB, you mean like matrix laboratory? The MAT stands for matrix, you make a matrix, you store a matrix, you know? Like this is the first one, the second one, the third one, you know? Remember the whole data structure, the whole structure of MATLAB is the matrix. You have to become one with the matrix. Everything is a matrix. Yes, the, a single number really should be thought of as a one by one matrix. It's called a scalar, but it's a one by one matrix. Um, there we go. Now, this way then is good and it works. It works beautifully, it works seamlessly. You can put in my step of a time for now to eternity and it will work. Um, let me ask you something here. Let's, so this, I, I mentioned that the step function is useful for an on and off um, phenomenon. It turns on to a one. As a matter of fact, let's do this. Where's my step function? Let's put T vector equal to lin space. When I'm plotting, I like lin space because it gives me, you know, you could use the colon notation, of course. Lin space, put a comma in there, don't you? Lin space. And since that's gonna do 100 numbers, just don't look at them all. Let's don't look at them all, but let's plot it. Plot the T vector versus this thing. We have to hold it, you know. H step. I dangerously probably will double up with one of MATLAB's name for this. MATLAB probably has something like that. So let me just call it Y. I like to call things more like what they are, but sometimes, you know, like if I want to call something SIN, I'm going to be in trouble because MATLAB already has SIN and that kind of thing. So I'll call it Y. Let's call that. And in this case, let's publish it so we can better look at it. Okay, and there's the plot. Minus two to four 
you can see here the it's a little well, Matt Lab, see it's it's lined up there. What the hell's happening now? Oh test on me. There it goes. You can see that the line is up here. It's a little bit hard to read. What might be nice is to set the X limit up a little higher so you can see that. So here's a couple of little graphing subtleties to let's set. And first of all, now I mean, here's another thing I like to do. As we go along, I add subtleties, you know. There's something called line width. Now I think line, line width. I personally think that the, the, the curve itself, does this need to be in parentheses? I mean, this might not, we'll discover here, but it error doesn't point. I don't know if I width, uh, line width 1.5. I personally think that the default line width in MATLAB is wimpy. W-I, wimpy. I think the star of the show is the line itself, and I think it should be big and bold. And I think that, so that's one and a half times the default. Pick this, I don't know, it's, it's, it's a thing here. Let's try this one. Let's run this one right here. Run this section. Line width. It's gotta be like this. There we go. And you see what it did? Well, let's do one more time. Line width, let's over, I think three times is a little overkill in one section. See, but, but you can see clearly it goes like that. Another way, I think maybe to go down here to 1.5, and there's something called, I see, X limb, I think the X axis limits, X limb is, um, let's set it zero to 1.1 or something, and that probably needs to be, I don't keep these things all the time. It probably needs to be a vector like that, but we'll discover it in just a second. Here we get an error. Okay. And it went way up to two. I don't know why I did that. But, um, oh, the X. I mean, the X. What I wanted was the Y limit. Y limit, one section. Okay, there we go. Now that's a more readable graph. I did two things, which I like. I like to make my graphs usually one and a half times the default thickness. Just like I said, the, the graph, I mean, you're doing this not to look at all the little detailed numbers and stuff, but you're doing this to look at graph. The graph is the star of the show, the curve. I mean, it's the star. You want the bright lights on that. I just don't like the little wimpy lines. And second of all, you might need to make all these little subtle changes in limits and stuff to make it look nice. I like to get that last line off of that axis up there so because it doesn't look like anything. Anyway, you see it's doing it right. Now, let me ask you something. How would you plot? Let's say two things. Let's say that the step function turned on at zero, but it turned on with a strength of 10. Because you might say, oh, I, I, I see your application. It's one of your main applications is it's gonna, you can like turn on a force, a heater, a voltage source. But I turn mine on at numbers other than 10, I mean, other than one. How would you turn this on with a 10? Well, let me tell you. What you do is you set 10 times this and let us, let us publish this section because when you publish, you get all the uh, queer and the junk and all that junk in there. I don't know what the hell happened there. Mm -hmm. Oh, whoops. Now I got to go back to. Let's just forget about this violin because I feel this right there. Okay, so there's a print out of here. okay I'm going to publish this thing one more time. Painstaking, isn't it? A lot of detail. Notice, it, I mean, the, 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 obviously the step function scales beautifully. If your source turns on with a 10, you just do the unit step times 10. See it, with a 10, beautiful. So you're not limited to 10 because clearly you start a system and you start pushing with a, course, a force of 100 Newtons. I want 100, I don't want one, so this step function is no good. No, multiply it by 100. The other thing about the step function uh, is, 
what if you want to start the step function? What if you start your force at, uh, what if you were to start, start to turn on your uh, thing in two seconds and not at zero? Well, I think you can take T vector, T vectors in zero, T vector, I think. I think you can do, let me just test something. Uh, one through four. Let's go one, two, three, four. You know what that does. Okay. And let's do this minus two. I think, I think this thing will work, yeah. So generally, if you do one through four and subtract or add something that's mismatched in size, it won't do it, except for a scalar. If you want to add, subtract, do something with a scalar, it's fine. So that's what I wanted to test. Oh, wait a minute. Oh, minus two will happen there. Answer one, two. Um, anyway, my question was going to be I guess with that one, two, four, minus two. Um, how, to, how to do it when you turn on some other different time? And, you know, we could either write our own function that, that displaces it or do it here. Let's make sure we comment some things here. That one did not work while well. this is this one. Let me just comment here. Sometimes I'll do one, I'm showing you something, it's not good enough, but I've shown it to you and some students don't realize that and they try to use it in the future. Let me make the other comment here. This is on step function one. Not good enough for our purposes. Do not use, okay? Copy this, that's that function two. Um, let's say this one works great for scalars and vectors and vectors and works great for scalars and for vector t. So this one works great. Um, in the remaining time, I want to show you something more subtle. Now this, this back in the day, you know my back in the day story. You know, what the hell happened? I have something I've lost here. Oh God, I'm just trying to type something in. I can see I lost part of my thing here. In an attempt to put that comment in, I fouled myself up. Somebody asked about the comma. We can probably it'd probably work without the comma. My step of three. Let's see what else. Yeah, my step of two. Yeah. Yeah, we're fine without the comma. Okay, I want to show you one thing really quickly here and, and then make some concluding comments. Let me save this one, I guess. Okay. Oh my God, go. I want new function. All right. I want a new function, yes. I want to call this one my step three. Copy. Step. So they call my step three. Let me show you a very elegant way with the modern code. Like I said, when I first learned Fortran back in the day, I had to do if this, if that. 
and I loved it. I, I, you know, I still think that way and we still think that way, but because of the more powerful software available today and its vectorization, you can actually do things quite a bit more elegantly. For instance, how about this? Set H equal to T. Greater than or equal to zero. So, and we, we don't want to look at all the results. Let's let's look carefully what that might do. If t was equal to minus two through two, let's do that. What the hell? What do you think t greater than, or the question t greater than or equal to zero will do? It gives you the logical array, no, no, yes, yes, yes. So really you could do the step function like that. Of course we need to contest it, you know. Um, I'll, I'll be done with just a second. Uh, what the hell is it? Save, save, save as. Step function three, there it is. And let's test it real quick to make sure. This thing. Copy, paste, this is step function three, this is three, this is three. Let's put it through the same pace as we just did the other one. Let's run this thing on that section. And let's see if step function three works. Now with all that, it probably won't work, but let's give it a section. Let's give it a little look at it. So you did the same thing. Make sure you know you can put this equal to, uh, you know, two, make it a line again, one section. Look at that. So, in summary, I've shown you one way that's good enough for one number, but not good enough for a vector. So it's not good enough for us. I showed you the way that you think about it. You do each T, you test it, and you record your value. This is the way you think about it. And this is the way you had to do this before vectorized Mathematica and MATLAB came along. But here's probably the way that the MATLAB programmers would suggest you do it. It's probably faster and more elegant. And you know, probably not obvious to the, to the students immediately that that would be a nice way to do it. Look at how beautiful that is, just using the logic. Okay, I guess so. Uh, uh, the class ends at 12.30, right? I'm just kidding. I know. Okay, I'll end right there, and we'll stay on the internet for a little bit if anybody has questions.